dear learners, welcome to NIOS. I am Anjali Bajpay, Professor, Faculty of Education, Banaras Hindu University. And today we will discuss about concept mapping in science. A concept map is a two-dimensional graphic or schematic diagram illustrating the interconnections and often the hierarchy of a particular concept or a topic. If we have to define concept map, we can define as Concept map is a visual illustration displaying the organization of concepts and outlining the relationship among or between these concepts. This definition was given by Hoffman and Nowak in 2003. Another definition of concept map is, it is a two-dimensional hierarchical note-like diagram that depicts verbal, conceptual or declarative knowledge in succinct visual or graphic form given by Houghton et al. in 1993. Now after the definition we can say what is a concept map. We can say that a concept mapping is a pedagogical technique to help students see explicitly how new concepts can be related to previously learned concepts. This technique is based on Ossible's theory of meaningful verbal learning. Meaningful verbal learning means that you have to relate previously learned concept to the new concepts and if we can give them in a relation to the students then the students will be able to understand the new concepts better. This was on the basis of what Nowak et al gave in 1981. Concepts maps are tools for organizing and representing knowledge. They include concepts usually enclosed in circles or boxes of some type and relationship between the concepts or prepositions indicated by connecting line between the two concepts. The idea of concept mapping is based as previously mentioned on meaningful verbal learning theory of Ossible 1960. That is the prior knowledge is important for learning new concept. If the new concept are linked with prior learning and taught to the learner, he can relate it better and learn it more permanently. And that is what Ossible said, that for a new learning to be meaningful, it has to be linked with the previously learned knowledge. It was developed by Joseph D. Nowak and his research team in Cornell University in the 1970s. A concept mapping is a technique used to organize information or thoughts. Concept mapping is a visual representation of an individual's knowledge structure on a particular topic. It delineates individual differences in learning, that is, everyone learns things differently based on their basic cognitive structure. It can be used to stimulate the generations of idea to aid creativity and for brainstorming. It is very suited for studying science. A concept map or a conceptual diagram is a diagram that depicts suggested relationship between concepts. And a concept is what our mind feels about anything, any particular topic, any particular object. A concept map typically represents ideas and information as boxes or circles which it connects with labeled arrowed in a downward branching or a hierarchical structure. Concept map is a graphic tool used to organize and structure knowledge. If the knowledge is presented in form of concept map, it is better visualized and can be grasped easily. Concept map illustrates patterns and relationship among the concepts. Concept map represents a particular domain of knowledge and how it is arranged hierarchically in a person's mind or a person's brain. Concept maps are based on preposition which link the various concepts and concept maps are highly individualized because every person can have a different concept map for himself or herself. The components of concept map are the oval boxes or the circular boxes which are arranged in a series and linked with lines. These boxes are the nodes of the concept map. Lines represent the relationship between these nodes or the concepts. Labels on the lines describe the nature of relationship which is there between these concepts. Arrowheads indicate the direction of relationship in what we have to proceed. 
For example, if we have to see a concept map of concept mapping, it can be depicted in the following way. First, we can have the concept map and then gradually we can say it is a graph which show has nodes and linkages. These nodes represent the concept and the lines represent the linking words. And the linking words can be explained by the relationship between the pairs which are there. A concept map is a very useful component in classroom teaching learning because it carries out all the three function of classroom teaching learning. That is, it is a planning tool which maps out what has to be taught or learnt in the class or what instruction has to be given. It is a learning tool which maps out the basic concept to reinforce knowledge being learnt for the learner and it is the evaluation tool which validates the learning outcomes by mapping, the, mapping out what has been learnt or recording or noting what has been learnt. So it carries out all three functions of a classroom teaching learning that is planning, learning or processing and evaluation or assessing. Concept map is usually a non-linear web-like like the main topic are connected to secondary subtopics which in turns are connected to the tertiary subtopics within the diagram. The main topic and the subtopics are then connected by linking words that describe the relationship between the two or three. There can be various types of concept map depending how we present the information or the concept and the linkages between them. The first type can be the spider concept map, hierarchical concept map, flowchart concept map and system concept map. Now if we discuss one by one, in the spider concept map, the central theme is in the center and the sub themes are radiating from that center theme outwardly. In this can be another type of spider concept map where we have the center theme and the three radiating sub themes are there. The other form of concept mapping is the hierarchical where we have the main concept first and from that in the hierarchical order the sub concept deviate. Second level we have the second level of sub concept and the third level we have the tertiary level of sub concepts. Then this concept mapping can also be in form of flowchart which is linear. One by one we can go from one concept to another which is linked in a linear form in a linear fashion. First we come to first concept, then we come to the second concept, then we come to the third concept and then we come to the fourth concept and so on. Another form of concept mapping as we have mentioned earlier is the system type concept mapping where it is closed. The input begins from one side and it comes in the form of output put from the other side. It is a closed system where the things enter from one side and they go out from other side. Construction of a concept map has got following steps. First we have to identify the major concept referred as seed in the concept map. Then these concepts have to be arranged on a paper to form a hierarchy from general to specific or from the more complex to less complex or less complex to more complex in a particular manner. Then the links of the concept including the linking phrases have to be organized. The connection of the concept to form preposition to show the relationship between two concepts has to be determined. Linking concept is most important aspect of concept mapping. Construction of concept map again requires making cross links between the two concepts in a different vertical segment of a map to understand the relationship. The cross link represent the relationship between the concepts in different domains of concept mapping and the results are there for evaluation in the end. The stages of construction of concept mapping require following things. First of all, it is the brainstorming stage followed by organizing stage, then the layout stage, then the linking stage, then the revising stage and finally the finalizing stage. Now we can discuss this one by one. The brainstorming stage of concept mapping deals with listing all the terms and concept associated with the topic of interest. Then we have to write in one word or phrases and note them 
properly. We don't have to worry about the redundancy because there may be many things which are noted many times. And then we have to generate a possible list of concepts which we are going to discuss. Then is the organizing stage. The concepts have to be spread on the blackboard or the paper wherever you want to express it. Then the, there has to be a group of the related concept that is main concepts have to be organized first and then the subgroups have to be arranged. The group items are there to emphasize the hierarchies. Then the identify how which item is higher and which is lower and then rearrange the items and if needed introduce new terms and omit the terms which were not required. Then is the layout stage where we arrange the terms based on the interrelationship and connections among the groupings is made. Within the subgrouping place closely related items are nearer to each other and those which are less related are further to each other. Then these items are connected in form of a simple sentence that shows the relationship between them in between the linking lines. The linkage stage which comes the next uses the lines with arrows to connect the items. Then we have to write a word which shows the linkages between these groups or stages. Write a word or a short phrase for each arrow to specify the relationship. Many arrows can originate or terminate at important concepts. That is not at all there that we have to have only one arrow from a one concept. There can be many arrows from a concept. Next is the revising stage where carefully we have to examine the draft of the concept map that we have prepared. We have to rearrange the concept to emphasize organization and appearance and Next, we have to remove or combine the terms which are there or which are redundant and then we can add color to different or different fonts at various stages to make the concept map more attractive. Then is the finalizing stage where we have to finalize the arrangement of items that convey the better understanding. We can be creative by using different colors, different fonts and different shapes that makes the concept map more attractive in the final stage to be presented to the learner. Then how we can evaluate the concept mapping? First of all, we should see the accuracy and thoroughness that are the concepts and relations correct? Are the important concepts missing? If they are missing, how they have to be incorporated? Are any misconceptions there in the map? If those misconceptions are there, they have to be clarified before finally presenting the map. Second level is organization. Does the map show hierarchy? Does it have a title? That is, whatever it is representing is represented in a proper organized way. Next, the appearance of the map has to be orderly, it has to be neat, it has to be colorful, the cross linkages should not appear dirty or overlapping. Does the map show meaningful connection? It is very important because it is in that flow we will let the learner know how things are related. And last, we, the map should be creative, that is, it should effectively communicate the concept and stimulate interest. For that, as already mentioned, we can use various colors, we can use various fonts, we can use various designs. The educational benefits of concept map are, it is an instructional tool, that is, we can give instruction by using the concept map. It is a very good assessment tool. We can leave blanks at certain places and ask the student to fill it. And as at once glance, we can know whether the student has understood the concept or not. It is a mind tool for critical thinking because as already said, in our mind, the things are arranged in a hierarchy and the concept map helps us in relating to that hierarchy. The curriculum organization or it acts as a good guide in teaching learning because it helps us to know what concepts of the curriculum are to be taught first and what have to be taught later on. It is a very good tool for promoting meaningful verbal learning as it is based on the concepts of possible verbal learning which means that if we can link the previously learned knowledge to the new knowledge is always meaningful to the learner.
it generates basic ideas, new ideas by means of brainstorming and last but not the least, it also helps us to enhance metacognition. That is to know how to learn or to know how to read, that is metacognition is enhanced by concept learning. Metacognition is knowing about how to know or learning to know how to learn. So, it helps in metacognition. The advantages of concept map are that in, in, it enhances clarity of relations between the various concepts, so the learner is able to learn better. It improves clarity of thoughts because things are arranged in a systematic manner and our mind has that power to relate to the things which are arranged systematically in a hierarchical order. It helps to assimilate more information because if new information is linked to the previously learnt information, it is obviously and generally more meaningful. It helps us to achieve deeper understanding or the learner is able to see the relationship between the various concepts and understand how they can be explained or interpreted. And it, because it is in a pictorial form, it improves memorization. Then it also improves coherence between the various complex and by improving coherence, it improves or influences knowledge construction. We are able to construct new knowledge based on the previously learned knowledge. And because it does that, it also improves understanding and learning and it is very easy to use and implement. A simple blackboard is required to make a concept map and show the pictorial representation to the children. And what happens? The participants are more focused because the representation is pictorial. It generates data that can be interpreted qualitatively or quantitatively. It clearly defines the central idea of any topic or theme by presenting it in a graphical or a pictorial form. Concept map identifies complex relationship between issues, factors as it is in a graphical format which can show the relationship by lines. It is replicated easily and is reliable. We can copy a concept map, the student can copy it or we can show a picture of it to anyone and that is also very useful. And by concept mapping, we can, since the children are drawing it, they are actively involved in the process of learning. So it promotes active participation. The disadvantages of concept map is that if it is not properly developed, then it can lead to lot of misconception in learning a concept. That is, in the absence of a structural approach, it becomes messy and hard to read. It is not good for inclusion of detailed information because if you write too much on the concept map or the graph, then it becomes messy and things are not clear. It is hard to identify all the relationship between concepts and many times the relationship are missed because in that concept map, we cannot draw too much of information at once. And to practice a concept map, to develop a concept map, to use a concept map, a experienced facilitator is required. If again, just to summarize, if we have to draw a concept map, again, we can say we can use the circles or the rectangles to write the main concept like we have written here concept map, graph, nodes, concept, linking lines and linking words. These are linked with various lines like with related pair, explain relationship and by this we can see the whole concept map, how it can be used to explain any concept of any subject and in case of science, we can see that concept map can be used to show a simple concept like the plant, like the plant. For example, a plant can be divided into two parts. If this we have to explain by the concept map, how we will do it. First of all, see 
What I have written, a cons plant can be divided into two parts, the underground root system and the above ground shoot system. The root system absorbs water and mineral salts from the soil. The shoot system provides space for stem, leaf, flower, fruit, etc. Stem transfers food and water, minerals, leaf makes food by photosynthesis, flower help in reproduction and fruit have the seed. Now, if this example I have to present by means of a concept map, what I have done, I have made the important concept as bold, the plant, root system, shoot system, absorb water, stem, leaf, flower, transfer of food and water, photosynthesis, reproduction and fruits have seed. The word which have to be put in the oval or the rectangle of the concept map have been put in bold. For example, you can see that the words like plant. Underground part is the root system. The function of the root system is to absorb water and minerals. Then the above ground part is the shoot system which has got stem, leaf, flower and fruit. The function of different plants have been shown. The stem supports leaves, flower and fruits and transfer water and mineral. Leaves help in photosynthesis, therefore help in pro making food. Flower have the reproductive organs and protect it, therefore it helps in reproduction. And fruit protects the seeds which give birth to the new plant. This whole thing can be explained by means of a concept map like this. The linkages can be drawn by the lines and the hierarchy can be shown by placing the things in a hierarchical order. Another example can be the spider concept map where the central idea is the solar energy which gives form to other types of energy that is we can conserve solar energy and give light energy. We can conserve solar energy and give heat energy. We can conserve solar energy and give mechanical energy and we can conserve solar energy and give chemical energy. So this is again the central point is the solar energy from which the various other forms of energy can originate. Therefore, we can say a concept map is a very, very useful tool for teaching science because in the science things have to be presented systematically in a systematic order, the concepts have to be linked properly so that the mind mapping is done in the child's brain. And since the concept map uses previous knowledge to learn, link new knowledge, therefore it can help the student to remember any concept for a large time and help it, him to understand it and implement it when needed. Thank you.